So I think most of the soldering is complete on the board. We've got all the components in place. I've added the potentiometer for the 555. I've got 5 volts DC coming in from an external power supply through the couple of clip leads here. I've soldered a couple of wire loops on to bring power in. I've got a wire loop over here that picks up ground. So I think we can go ahead and apply power to the board and see what happens. I would expect the two-phase clock generator to run and I would expect the 555 to run. So we're drawing 312, 313 milliamps sitting here at this point. Uh, 5 volts looks nice and solid at 5 volts. Let's go ahead and take the probe here. Let's talk a little bit about this. So we've got the dual one shots, uh, which are hooked together here by Q naught to B, so that they flip flop back and forth. They drive a couple of, of 07 buffers. Pins 8 and 10 output have 1K pull-up resistors on them. Those 1K ohm resistors are sitting here. And I know that from looking at this that there's a pet there's a, there's two pads here side by side that represent or, or, or contain the two clocks. Uh, so let's hook into one of these. We definitely see something. Uh, why is this in such a funny mode? There it is. Let me do an auto set. So the probe is calibrated. I'm not thrilled with how dull the the roll off coming up into the high on that clock. This one should be 180 degrees out of phase of that one. Let me hit auto set again. It's just the easiest way to do this. And they are certainly out of phase. Let's go to, we're at 2 volts per division, let's go to, is there a way for me to change that to 1 volt per division? Channel open, coupling DC, uh, I thought there was a way for me to do that. Well, I can drag them on top of each other. So that is what the 6501 or the 6800 would see is the clock. I think that clock will work. It's driving. It's driving hard up against 5 volts it looks like. I'd like to change the vertical cursor. I don't use this scope enough. Voltage plus. There we go. Channel 2. Voltage plus. I don't like all that noise down at the low end, but it is, let's see, channel 2, voltage plus, let's, oh, I only seem to be able to get a hold of channel 1, there's channel 2, back to channel 1, voltage minus, let me say, I'm, this little scope is, is what it is, there we go, that's a pretty good view of what we've got. Looks like I need to charge the battery in this thing. Uh, I don't know where that saved to, but I'm going to go ahead and save a couple of them. So, there's what our clocks look like. That's at 1 volt per division. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a really solid 5 volt drive, and that's what I expected from that 7407. So the next place I want to come down to is let's turn channel 2 off. Pull it out of circuit here. And we're going to take channel 1 down to the 555. And this is why I have a loop down here. I can pick a ground up down here. And if we look at that 555, it drives through a 7404, which is this guy right here. And pin 8 is the output. So I guess I can just touch on pin 8 here, do an auto set, that's actually uh, not nearly as stable as I would have liked. Why is there so much ground noise? Is that just this little scope having issues? It could be. Uh, I don't use this little scope much. Let's get on here and see if the pot adjustment works. Certainly not making 
any difference that I can see. Obviously something not right with the circuit here. So I'm thinking th this curved edge here is probably the cheap little uh, scope, honestly. But I would expect to see the frequency changing here, and I don't. Which makes me think this isn't running. Well, it is. 140 kilohertz. Just not as much as I think it should be. So the adjustment range probably isn't really wide. It's 139, 138. 137, 136, 135, 34. So it is, it is adjustable. I just need to get a good frequency counter on here. 35, what's the high end? So it, the span looks like it's 134. This is going to probably be a 10 turn pot. Boy, oh boy, I am really struggling to get the screwdriver back into the slot. Like, I can't even, I, it won't go in. What the heck? Now, you saw this. I was sitting here spinning on this screw. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. 45, 46, 47. Looks like it gives like a 20 kilohertz range or more. That tip is really twisted on that little screwdriver. Let's get somebody else here with a better tip. Hundred and fifty-one, so what we've got over 20 kilohertz of adjustment here, 153. That's where it's topped out. I heard it click inside. So we've definitely got some adjustment range. I don't know what's correct. I don't know what all that dancing is there is about. I may have to get the good scope up here. Huh. Yeah, that's got to be... That's got to be something to do with... I, I don't know, maybe that's accurate. I don't know. Uh, but I guess on the plus side here is both of the oscillators are actually running. So that's a good sign. I've still got configuration jumpers to put on. I've added one strap here already. Brings 5 volts down to these three buffers. Uh, for whatever reason, it's got to be brought down manually. Uh, I should have power every place on the board. I've confirmed that once. But we'll take a look a second time and just see what voltage is actually getting delivered to the board. So, let me set the meter in here. Hopefully it's showing up on screen. Let me get a clip. We'll clip onto the ground here. And we're on volts, the raw power coming in. Oh, it's DC plus AC. I want straight DC. Of course, it came unclipped because, you know, why wouldn't it? 4.94, so we're losing a little bit in the lead, not much. 4.93, so it's not bad. Uh, I can actually bring that up so it's directly 5 at the board. Oh, I'm bringing it up a millivolt at a time, that's why it's coming up so slow. I can dial that in pretty damn close to 5 volts. Oops. 
right there is about center. So 5.0004 volts. Yeah, like we can really trust that. What I want to do though is I want to look every place across the board just to get a sense if there's unexpected voltage drops any place. And there's really not. You always get a little bit of variation across the board just because there's copper. Copper does have resistance in the end. Uh, 5 volts here. Or is it? Must be. Okay, it's the bottom corner down here. Or no, it's not. Which corner is the 5 volts on a 2102? Is it a corner pin? I don't remember. That should be 5 there. that pin. I haven't looked at a 2102 in too long. Anyhow, I seem to have good power rails every place. Like I said, I've ohmed them out. Both the plus and the minus rails. They look good. So what next? Uh, Next is a couple things. It's going to be configuration, all this, the strapping I need to put on here, all those jumpers, uh, to get everything configured for the mode we want to be in. Uh, getting, of course, the frequency here adjusted correct. Why does that look crooked to me? Every time I look at it, it looks crooked. Uh, the frequency adjusted correct, whatever it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be 16 times the baud rate, if I remember right. A board does need a good clean. Uh, oh, I need to deal with termination over here. So that's the other big soldering piece. We're not through soldering. We've got to deal with termination. So I need to go read up on what termination I need and figure that out. So uh, anyhow, hey, we have some life on the board. We see clocks, so that's a really good sign. So uh, I guess with that, I'll wrap this one up, and I'll see you in a future video.